So I'm Cathy Pritchard-Jones, I'm a paediatric oncologist um, working at University College London and Great Ormond Street Hospital. I have a special interest in uh, kidney tumours of childhood. My name is Martin Trapper, I'm Chair of Paediatrics at the University of Kiel, Germany. I'm a paediatric hematologist and oncologist. My main sp and specific interest is in childhood leukaemia. So what motivated me to get involved in ENCA was that we've had a, several decades of very good professional networking in Europe, um, but that's really not enough to continue to make advances in the modern era of clinical research. So we clearly needed to establish a, an infrastructure in Europe that was going to bring the leading uh, clinical research groups together in a way that they could share um, best practice and experience and also work together to, to meet some, overcome some of the common challenges? I think the, the big advances over the last 30 years that we made in, in the treatment of um, childhood malignancies um, were uh, pushed forward by clinical trials. And to do clinical trials in Europe is, uh, has become rather difficult um, due to regulatory requirements, but also because the requir requirements for patient safety have been changed and increased, which is good in, in the interest of patients. Uh, but there's another element which motivated me to, to join in this activity. Um, the more we learn about biology of leukemia and cancer in children and also, of course, in adult patients, we understand that some of the pathways, some of the mechanisms that drives the cancer are the same, even though the disease have different names. And, and that's why we think if we work on the mechanisms that drive the cancer, we can also develop certain treatment strategies which are common both for solid tumors, leukemias and other malignancies. And I think we have um, therefore to join our forces and our resources um, to come to better um, outcome in our patients with less side effects. Uh, within the ANCA network, I'm, I'm considered to be the research coordinator and I'm focusing on two model diseases which are very frequent in, among the uh, patients with uh, childhood malignancies and this is leukemias and uh, a, a, another tumor called neuroplastoma. And um, we have several uh, highly interesting research activities going in this area in rare tumors and the more frequent tumors. And here we focus really on the biology and how we can translate the, the results from the laboratory into clinical practice. Um, if you go back 40 years, um, we had three or four drugs available. They, they came from adult um, uh, oncology and they were used in, in children and dosing was roughly estimated. And surprisingly, this worked actually in a rather significant number of patients but it was a very rough approach to the treatment of these uh, patients. Nowadays, we know thousands of pieces of information per child um, about the disease, about the individual setup, the pharmacogenetics, for example, of a child. And we, we have now the tools to develop this more individually because the aim nowadays is not only to cure the patient, but also to cure the patient with minimum side effects. This must be the aim of the next 20 years, uh, to, to reduce the side effects because the cure rates in many of the childhood cancers are already above 90%, which is fantastic. And this is what the parents uh, are very glad to hear at the beginning. So I have uh, two major roles. One, one, I lead work package 11, which is around how we're going to carry on doing prospective uh, clinical studies that maybe are not going to get badged as clinical trials because we've got to make you know save some of the precious um, funds for clinical trials are, are limited you can't do clinical trials and everything so as Martin said there's many childhood cancers now and, and Wilms tumor which is my special interest where cure rates we're curing almost 90% of the children with that disease but you know that sounds like a success story but actually it's not as big a success as you'd think because half those children are still getting drugs that can damage their heart, they're getting radiotherapy, and so we've got to optimise their therapy by trying to replace those toxic treatments with new drugs and also to cure the last 10%, we need to understand the biological mechanisms and bring in 
whole new drugs from probably from adult cancer experience that will help us get there. So that's a specific thing in Work Package 11. We're kind of focusing on how does one move forward using routinely collected information about patients with cancer, so through cancer registries where they exist. Sometimes it's hospital or regional registries. That can we add to the data that's collected in routine health service information to enable us to do uh, clinical studies that don't have to have all the bureaucracy and expense of clinical trials. And we're trying to use uh, Wilms tumour as an exemplar of how you do that. And then my other major areas as an overall part of the project management team of ENCO is that I'm in charge of the dissemination activities. So that's really about you know, the educational uh, work package led by my colleague Riccardo Riccardi in Italy. Uh, we have one of our work packages which is around new ways uh, of sort of disseminating better ways of providing care for teenagers and young adults because it's interesting in many countries in Europe the definition of what's a child and which part of the health service they get treated in is different in different countries um, and then the young adults people from the age of 20 onwards you know who may still be in full-time education and have the same sorts of needs as a child um, that, you know they're, they're very much considered as an adult by the health services and, and yet that might ignore some really important parts of the needs of that young person. And then finally one of the work packages is around um, forming a new partnership with uh, industry to work with the regulators, industry parents and the clinical investigators to, to, to really get the clinical research priorities and resources focused on the, you know, the biggest unmet clinical needs of the patients. And of course all of this means you've got to take the ethics of uh, working with young people, some of whom, are, of course, babies, very young children, can't give their own consent. But again, it's a grey area in Europe. When is a child able to make their own decisions about taking part in research, which may be therapeutic research, or it may just be allowing their tissues, their tissue samples, to be used to help with um, understanding the biology? We realised that in Wilms tumour, which is a Cathy specialty, or in childhood leukaemia, that the outcome is different in Eastern Europe than in Western Europe. We mm. are a European community. Yeah. We are absolutely dissatisfied that this is the situation because it's not a shortage of drugs in Poland or in other East European countries. It's the level of care and the availability of certain instruments to run uh, something which is really available for each individual child. So this is another motivation for us to really work in Inca and to promote this as a long-term project, not just for two or three years, then this would be completely frustrating, but really to build something up which guarantees that every child with cancer or leukemia in Europe gets the same quality of care, independent where it's living. And I think uh, we have a responsibility here um, as uh, pediatricians and uh, oncologists from the richer countries in Europe here to support our colleagues from the East who are excellent doctors. And I think to continue on that theme, you only know about how well or how badly you're doing for your patients if you've actually got the data on how you treated them and what happened to them. And still, Europe does not have complete cancer registry coverage. So part of the anchor work, again, is about training uh, staff to run cancer registries and help the local teams in those countries where there are currently not cancer registries. How do you develop one from scratch? Because that's essential. If we're going to, to learn anything about the impact of what we're doing, we have to understand what's happening to the patients now and then track improvements as we make changes. Earlier it was mentioned that uh, we need to join forces with industry, uh, national authorities, parents groups and so forth to, to promote better quality of care. Uh, I fully agree with this, of course, and I think here we run into a, a more political aspect because um, childhood cancer is something rare, and uh, we, if we approach rare diseases, it is always difficult for industry to make large profits, even small profits will not be feasible because new drugs, and we will have a whole panel of new drugs, the more we learn about biology, will not be feasible because quite frequently these drugs cannot be used in adult cancer. And if that's the case, we have two choices. We can just not do it and not utilize our new information, how to treat better, or we do it, but then we need a different type of investment, how to finance such strategies. Because with the conventional way that how we do drug development today, it will not be feasible. We have some examples of newly developed drugs which are so expensive 
that it's clear from the beginning that they will not be used in East Europe and in many other countries because it's just an overburden of the health system. I think it's a decision by the, by the, uh, by the governments and by Europe. Um, uh, if we think that there's a priority to invest in such new strategies and maybe reconsider some other decisions in our health system, because I think the health system, at least speaking for Germany, is comprising enough money. It's just the way that it's being spent. Um, the priorities maybe could be uh, questioned. So um, I also believe that if you look at the expenses that are needed in other rare diseases to really improve the outcome of such patients, the cost may be not so high. And if we save some of the late effects in children, just look at the numbers of children who when they are adults, have a whole series of severe late effects. If we can omit just half of that, we save so much money for the society because they, they're often not even able to, to go to, uh, to work on a regular basis because they have so many secondary health problems due to the earlier treatment when they were children and had cancer. I think there are two important aspects to um, education of health professionals that are relevant to childhood cancer. So first of all, this is a very specialist area. The, the treatments are complex and we need to educate not only doctors, but you know, nurses, radiologists, um, allied health professionals. But I think, I think if I just stick with medical training for the moment, currently in some countries in Europe, specialising in childhood uh, blood and solid tumour disorders is not recognised as a specialty. So you can train as a paediatrician or as a haematologist, but there's no accreditation of the, your level of knowledge and understanding of, of childhood cancer. So I think that's the first step that any national government body has to do. It has to both provide the opportunities to allow their health professionals to train and subspecialise in this way, but it also has to accredit it, because until you've got staff who clearly know what they're doing, you cannot then accredit the services that they're running and delivering. So I think that's the first aspect. And then secondly, very importantly, is that we're moving away from doctors treating um, diseases of organs and parts of the body, and we're moving towards doctors needing to understand the molecular basis of disease much more um, fully, because the treatments that we're, being, that we're going to be offering in the 21st century will be focused on the biological pathways in, in cancers rather than whether they're in the, the liver or the kidney, for example.